This piece is called Once Removed. It's by a composer named John Fitzrogers. He's a guy I met on tour a few years back. He lives in South Carolina, and it represents, um, for us personally, kind of one of these chance happenings to meet somebody that ends up resulting in a great piece of music. But uh, about it, it, it's a piece that really explores grooving in some really tiny way. We're both playing almost the same marimba music, but where the, what the title suggests being once removed means that in this piece I'm one note removed from, from what the material Todd plays. I should, I should admit that we use a click track when, when, you, when we perform this piece, so we, do, we have some guides that help us through it because I think without that help we would not be able to do, to do what it does. You could also, if you wanted to think about, you know, percussion, percussive origins of a piece like this, it is a little bit like um, Amadinda music from Africa, which is this music for two xylophones that play similar patterns, and if you listen to it, you'll quickly not know what the downbeat is and get, get um, sucked up into this world of, of hocketing. Uh, hocketing, if you don't know, is when one person plays one rhythm and the other person plays in the hall, so this piece is one large hocket. We actually tried the piece without the click, uh, just to see if we could be supermen. Uh, but it's just much, much uh, safer and easier to play to play with the click. Uh, I think the what we want for the overall uh, result, uh, we're going to get to that place quicker using that that click track. But you know, the most attractive thing I, I think about the piece is I, it just sounds cool. It's one of those pieces that I just wanted to play because it it sounds cool. Um, it turns out that it's really, really hard to play as, as a duo. When we first started working up our individual parts, I think we probably both thought, okay, I can play dito, 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 dito over and over and over, that's not a big deal. But when you take, and he does the same thing, and you get for 10 minutes, that becomes a challenge. So uh, it's been endlessly interesting, I think, to us and kind of a staple in, in our repertoire. I think the composer, when he wrote it with the click track, he specifically was trying to write some piece that was kind of man versus machine, where he gave these people this impossible task and one needs to be a slave to this thing. And I think the composer is the only one who's excited about that. Um, John, if you're watching, that's what I think. Uh, yeah, for us, it, it quickly became, okay, we need to use this as a tool, but let's, yeah, like Todd said, we're, all we're trying to achieve is something that sounds really nice and that, as an audience member, I think, this again is where percussion not only is sonically interesting, but visually interesting. I think as you watch this and you kind of get into watching the, the sticks moving in opposition to each other, I think it's a very visually engaging thing to, to experience as well as sonically. Playing with a click brings up a number of, uh, of issues as a musician, I think, I think philosophically speaking. It is something that I do use sometimes, um, I use it a lot in recording and uh, even sometimes in, in concert performances. I know some, some performers really hate, hate a click at all costs and they always want to be feeling like they're in control of their performances and, and I think that's that's fine. And to go back to recording, there are definitely pieces that I've recorded that I use a click that I in the studio so that I can get the effect that I want after the fact that on stage I would never do that. But um, there are some pieces, for example, there's a composer named Xenakis. And Xenakis writes these music where I'm playing five over sevens for three minutes and Todd's gonna play six over three and the guy next to me is gonna play 
7 over 11, and these, these polyrhythms get very complex and very drawn out. And a lot of people who perform that music don't use a click and enjoy the struggle of how are we going to make this sort of gesture happen and how are we going to find our way to the end. And I bet they play it mostly correctly, but for myself when I'm in those kind of situations, I will often go to a click because I would like to hear in that complexity, there's a way we can do that exactly correctly. And when it's done correctly, it's an amazing sound. So of course I would use click tracks to, to make something complex happen very predictably. So, so in that case, I think absolutely click tracks can be great concert tools, um, but I don't at all feel the need to use them for every piece. Sometimes making concert music to me feels like um, when you're cooking. So let's say you're, let's say, I don't know who out there is a chef, but you're, you're cooking, you're making pasta tonight. You put in too much salt. So that means you have to adjust that with a little bit of extra seasoning here, and then maybe this happens, so you have to adjust something over here. And I feel that music is that way, where maybe I played this too loud over here, so I'm gonna play a little more quietly over here, and I'm gonna speed this section up to react to the fact that I got lost over here, and I need you to forget that I got lost. And if I have a click track, I can't, I can't do those kind of things in real time. I'm just playing to the click. So I do, I do, that's one of the most fun things about performing, I think. And particularly for a duo, you know, I think that's the kind of thing where, depending on the night, maybe, we're pushing on each other, or we're pulling, and having those kind of musical conversations is what I think makes it fun for us and hopefully also for audiences. Yeah, so this is the um, first installment of hopefully uh, hopefully many uh, installments to come of the duo, and uh, we're just we're really excited to bring as many pieces um, to, uh, to VicForth.com as possible. Uh, we also have a ton of ideas uh, about some, some educational resources and talking about chamber music and kind of explaining the process that we go through and uh, hopefully um, that can be of great benefit to younger players. And um, we think that you know, this, is, this is the coolest thing ever and we hope that you feel the same. <laughs>